is our moment. This is our time. This is our chance to stand up for what's right. We're not looking for charity. We're looking for justice. It was a beautiful And it was a beautiful day. Bono asked, and the world responded. It was a heartwarming story. All the nations of the world getting together with the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank to reduce the debts crushing the poorest nations on Earth and killing their people. It all looked good. Then down swooped the vultures, who bought up the debt cheaply and then squeezed these poor countries to pay them 10 times what the speculators originally paid for the debt. Five years ago, Gordon Brown told the United Nations that the vultures were perverse and immoral. We particularly condemn the perversity where vulture funds purchase debt at a reduced price and make a profit from suing the debtor country to recover the full amount owed, a morally outrageous outcome. Yet today, the vultures are still demanding huge payoffs, one of them expects to win $40 million this week from Zambia. We thought we'd track him down. We set out on our vulture hunt by going to their natural habitat, Washington, D.C. Our to make sure our troops have what it takes to do their jobs. The president is Our hunt took us to a man who loves Cadillacs, customized with mag wheels. On the caddy owner's website, he calls himself Goldfinger. <laughs> Goldfinger, he's the man, the man with the Midas touch. Who is Goldfinger? We know that Michael Francis Sheehan owns Debt Advisory International, which manages vulture companies run out of the British Virgin Islands, including one called Donegal, which is suing Zambia. It's quite a complex web, and we hope Sheehan, Goldfinger, would untangle it for us, but he wouldn't grant us an interview. So we thought we'd say hello to him while on his morning stroll through the wooded suburbs of Washington. Greg Palast, uh, BBC Television Newsnight. I just want to ask you, Mr. Sheehan, um, why are you squeezing the poor nation of Zambia for $40 million? Doesn't that make you a vulture? No comment. I'm in litigation. It's not my my. Well, dad. you've been avoiding this question. Aren't you just profiteering off the good work of people who are trying to save lives by cutting the debt of these poor nations? No, there was a uh, proposal for investment, but that's all I can talk about. A British court is about to rule on whether the Goldfinger-linked companies will walk away with $40 million from the Zambian government. I asked an advisor to Zambia's president what this judgment means to a nation where the average wage is a dollar a day. If these bondholders get their $40 million, what does that mean to Zambia? The kind of money we are talking about in excess of $40 million is literally wiping out Zambia's annual savings arising from debt relief. Sometimes it falls upon a generation to be great and end to the debt crisis for the poorest countries. Celebrities and pop stars campaigned for 10 years for debt relief. And the wealthier nations responded. A child dies completely unnecessarily as a result of extreme poverty every three seconds. Speculators, the vultures, realized they could make massive profits off everyone else's generosity by diverting into their own pockets the debt relief meant for the poor. You look at an animal, the meat's all been picked off, the country seems bankrupt, and these guys can double, triple, or make even more on their money. Debt relief is actually just clearing a path for the vultures to walk in right behind them. Here's how the vultures got Zambia. In 1979, Romania lent them $15 million. By 1998, Zambia was broke. So Romania offered to write off the entire debt for just $3 million. But before the deal was final, a vulture swooped in and somehow snatched Romania's cheap offer for his own company. Goldfinger. Michael Sheehan and his associates are now suing Zambia not for the $3 million they paid, but for the original debt plus interest 
$142 million. But even bigger money is to be made in the U.S. courtrooms, where Sheehan and others are asking for hundreds of millions of dollars from several desperately poor nations. And George Bush can put an end to it all with a stroke of a pen. Under the U.S. Constitution, the president has the power to stop the vultures from collecting a penny in a U.S. courtroom. But he hasn't done it, even though just last month, George Bush publicly committed his government to debt relief. And let us continue to support the expanded trade and debt relief that are the best hope for lifting lives and eliminating poverty.